Um, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity to speak at the ABARES conference. Um, I've been given the task of uh, covering the topic, uh, using precision ag technologies to evolve a farming business and improve profitability, which is pretty broad. Um, I guess today my aim is to give you guys a bit of an insight into our farming business and the way that we've um, grown to use precision ag in a variety of ways. Um, examples of, um, I'll go through some examples of precision agriculture and describe um, how they've become valuable or profitable. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess some of the examples aren't necessarily technical, but um, they're all very practical and uh, tried, and tried and tested um, and, and used on our, our farm. So Rowan gave a pretty ex extensive uh, introduction there, but I guess looking up at that now, um, that's probably in order of importance, I suppose. Um, who am I? Um, sorry, Joe. Um, I'm mum of Charlie and Ted. Um, first night away from the kids in 13 months, so yeah, a bit of a shock to the system, but I wear a few hats. Um, yeah, uh, mother, wife of Joe, my um, my husband, uh, we run run the family farm with with his mother and father, um, which is called Breezy Hill Ag. So my roles on the farm can include anything from um, processing yield data, admin, um, assisting with grain marketing, um, through to practical jobs such as driving our chaser bin. I'd hate to have the job on on your farm with those huge runs, but um, yeah, I guess in keeping food up to two big boys and two little boys um, in amongst it all. So I guess it was only recently that someone made the comment to me and I hadn't really thought about it, but um, I guess my job um, as a precision ag consultant and, and Joe's skills as a farmer have probably helped us um, accelerate our precision ag adoption as, and we act like a bit of a team, I guess. Um, um, as Rowan alluded to, um, yeah, Precision Ag Consultant at Insight Ag Solutions, which is a, a spin-off of a um, John Deere dealership, and my role here, I, I think, is pretty base rate Precision Ag. I help farmers um, that, um, I guess, that have basic um, PA gear to sort of move to the next level, um, overcome compatibility issues, sell it, support it, be on the end of the phone, um, and also help them with data as well, and also sell um, machinery if the opportunity arises. Um, and of course, yeah, recently I've taken on the, uh, the role of Society of Precision Agriculture, which is opening up many doors like speaking here today. So that's our farm there, uh, up north of Goiter's Line. Uh, and there's, there's me on my job as a, as a PA consultant. Uh, so Breezy Hill Ag, um, we have two properties, one at Bullaroo Centre, as I alluded to, north of Goiter's Line. Um, we, we call this a low rainfall environment. Um, back yeah, in colonial times, Goyder's line was basically a line that said, don't farm north of there. Um, we are north of there. Uh, so um, yeah, we, we hedge our bets. Our other property at Georgetown, um, 85 kilometres south, has a lot higher rainfall. Um, and we also farm uh, a sheep as well, uh, fine wool merinos. Um, and our, our average yield um, ranges from sort of two and a half to three and a half. Um, tonnes per hectare on the property. Um, I guess a little bit of background. Uh, Joe came straight back onto the family farm in uh, 2007 after he'd finished school. And um, this is where, I guess, the journey with precision agriculture took off. Um, uh, since then, our cropping area has tripled and is now at 1,800 hectares. Um, and I guess I've been incredibly lucky that from the age of about 18, 19, um, Joe's parents have included me in the family farm and, and um, for the last five years, um, we, we've both been directors of that business. So where have we come from? Uh, 2008, um, just looking at that photo, I don't think that's legal. That's my thing. Um, <laughs> I've, um, I, I strapped, I, I'm hoping anchor points might be a way of the future in, in a tractor, but uh, that day I had no choice. Um, uh, 2008, the journey started with Precision Agriculture. Um, Joe and a, and a mate in the pub um, decided that, that they were going to put an RTK GPS tower um, on a hill behind our property. That has since grown, um, and uh, there are now 56 businesses working off that RTK network, which is unique in the fact that it is a community-owned um, network. It's only 100 bucks a year to subscribe to, um, and it has I think changed the landscape of precision ag in the upper north and accelerated the, the adoption of it. Um, uh, yeah, not long after that, we retrofitted a um, uh, yield monitoring system to our 
good old TR86 New Holland header and that began the journey with um, yield mapping. We have EM, EM soil mapped most of our property. Um, we started with variable rate fertiliser on our Borgo cedar back in 2010 um, and have since progressed to a, um, to a precision uh, conserver pack cedar with um, variable rate um, capability as well. Uh, we've doubled in NDVI and I'll show an example of that soon. Um, also doubled with drones and, um, and more recently some, uh, some variable rate lime as well. So what have been the game changers for us? There's a picture there as well. As I mentioned, RTK Auto Steer has basically changed uh, everything uh, for us, or R RTK Signal has changed everything. Um, it's meant that our GPS accuracy is repeatable, it's two centimetre and it's reliable. Um, it's allowed us to interrow row so. Um, uh, it's allowed us to have accurate boundaries and moving forward it will allow us to be um, on a controlled traffic system um, of uh, 12 metres as well. The other thing that's changed for us is um, the ability to record data. Um, as I mentioned, starting off with the, with the harvester with yield data, um, starting our catalogue of, of data, and since um, adding in, in other layers, um, we are fortunate enough to, I guess, have contacts in, in, um, uh, that have allowed us to use a program called Gateway. And um, this software allows you to stack data. Um, everything's... Um, uh, GPS uh, referenced and um, as you can see there this is just an example of a field where we've been able, able to compare um, some yield maps with some crop spec data so NDVI data um, and some other map layers as well. Um, one of my roles um, is to process our yield data which is basically tidying up um, the data and um, taking out any errors or anomalies and um, that's meant that we've got good quality data as well. Moving on um, other handy tools, uh, there is a line between need to have and nice to have. Um, the quadcopter is something that, um, yeah, as I said, we've, we've dabbled in and, and Joey's actually had, had most of um, the dealings with that. Uh, we're on our second drone now. I'll, I'll go into an example on the next page. But we've also got a live uh, weather station and moisture probe. Um, and uh, uh, like a telematics based one and we've also got weather um, a live weather station um, instantaneous feed into the header and the, um, and the uh, spray tractor as well. Um, we've got the ability now to do over the, over the air um, prescriptions so um, we can uh, once again using the cloud um, uh, to move prescriptions from, um, from the desktop over to the machine without the need for a USB. Um, whether that's going to make us money, I'm not sure. At the moment, it's, it's probably more of a gadget. Uh, so this is a, um, a uh, drone image taken of some slug damage in some canola at our Georgetown property. Um, we're suspicious that the slugs um, may like uh, certain soil types. We don't actually have an EM or a pH map of this field, but it would be very interesting to overlay it over the top. Um, yeah, we're suspicious that the, that the slugs are liking the cracking type soils um, and are coming out and wreaking havoc overnight in those areas. Um, uh, look, if, if we can do that, we might have an avenue to selectively bait down the track, but I guess without the drone, we wouldn't have known the extent of the damage and, and bothered to look further. Um, yeah, this is another example of, of the drone at work. Um, I guess proving that PA tools don't necessarily need to be scientifically backed. Um, this, is, this is giving us an idea of how advanced our canola is in the flowering process um, and we've got up, up in the sky to give us an idea of this. Um, in this particular case you can see the maturities followed the, um, the soil type um, and yeah, no action taken from this map but uh, I guess it's nice to know where your maturity is at for your, for your harvest planning. So making use of the cloud. Um, as I alluded to before, we've got weather stations on our two properties being 85 k's apart. Um, before Joe bothers to get out of bed and drive down to Georgetown to start spraying, he can uh, sit there, have a look at whether it's rained, um, uh, you know, whether it's windy, um, if, if his dad hasn't got out of bed and checked for him. Um, there is also um, the operations centre. When I made this presentation, I got in and had a look at what our tractor was up to. Um, the fuel tank was half empty, it was parked in the northeast direction. Um, I can tell what software is on it, whether it's up to date, 
and can also remotely connect to it on a smartphone. Um, and I use this tool through work as well to, to assist farmers if they've got um, diagnostic issues. Um, the other thing that um, Operation Centre um, heads on to is, is JD Link. Um, so JD Link is um, basically a, a connection, a modem that's inside the machine. This is a, a bread crumbing um, of Joe out spreading one night. Uh, wouldn't answer his phone, so I jumped on JD Link and, and found where he was, which was pretty handy. Um, can see exactly where he'd been. He'd, he definitely finished the paddock, so I'm not sure, too sure where he'd got to. Um, Agweld, uh, Agweld tr historically has been a, um, an agronomy tool, so our agronomist uh, uh, meets with us um, early in the year, puts all the recommendations in, sends them out, uh, and, and we can go through, make um, uh, chemical purchases, uh, all our cropping plan is in there. Uh, I guess the exciting thing is recently uh, Agworld have announced that they're going to team up with some other brands, uh, including the operations centre, uh, which means that hopefully in time, uh, as we um, carry out spraying operations or, or seeding operations, uh, we can we can move that as applied data over the cloud um, straight back into Ag World and we know that the job's been done. Less, less records to keep. Uh, and this is another example of a cloud. This is PCT Ag Cloud. Um, this is relatively new to the uh, gateway software, but this is an NDVI which we could generate off of there and, and generate a uh, VR urea map, uh, which Joe went out and spread, so variable rate um, in crop urea. So uh, better decision making. Uh, this is us uh, last year. We, we had a Georgetown um, property pH map, extreme variations of 3.9 through to uh, 8.9. Uh, we simplified this map into four rate zones, so traditionally this would have been spread um, with a blanket rate, uh, decided that some, some areas didn't need it, so the blue areas got zero, um, to anywhere through to three tonnes to the hectare, made a prescription map, put it into the, um, uh, the guy, the um, freight lines guy that came and put the, put the lime out and he, uh, yeah, basically was able to put that out at a variable rate which in this case resulted in a saving of um, 16,700 uh, bucks as opposed to putting out to the blanket rate and I, that takes into account that we, um, that we had to pH map that property as well. Uh, capital purchases, uh, we have employed a uh, advisory board so they meet with us three times a year and keep us honest in our purchases. Uh, so Precision Ag has been integral now in our um, capital um, purchase and decision making. Precision Ag is always on the agenda when considering m new machinery purchases. Uh, examples of this are the Mav Chopper, so you've just seen um, the header fly under there. Uh, we uh, recently purchased a chopper which was a significant cost of about $20,000. We could tell from the drone that the, um, the standard chopper on our harvester was not spreading chaff to the correct width of 40 feet, so um, I guess the UAV uh, helped us made that decision and now it's still not perfect but the, the drone's um, helping us uh, fine tune that piece of um, uh, new piece of machinery and, and we've got a much better chaff spreader result. Other examples, I guess we now have machinery policies as a result of this advisory board and embedded in those machinery um, policies uh, I guess non-negotiables or must-haves, so whenever we purchase a machine it must have Topcon steer so we can make use of the um, RTK network, um, Topcon control, so very rate control and um, control traffic capability so the wheelbase of the machine um, can go to three metres and, and the te telematics or the cloud-based uh, gear is a bonus. Uh, so farming smarter, so here's another example of how PA has helped us achieve a more profitable result. Um, last year we discovered we had frosted peas in the centre of this field and um, when Joe went out there was quite a large green patch in the middle. They'd been frost damaged and as a result we got stressed and shot out. Um, so Joe said why don't we get an e NDVI of, of the, um, the day that these were crop top. So we did, we went back to October the 15th, I downloaded the NDVI map. Um, bingo, they matched up with the, with the frosted patch in the middle. Um, from there, I was able to um, uh, create an exclusion zone, which we loaded into the harvester. And then, as you can see there, 
Um, that's Joe harvesting out the exclusion zone. Um, they're basically the frosted peas in the middle, which got fed to the sheep. They were pretty happy. And as a result, the rest of the um, field went straight through the silo system and was deliverable. Um, so there's about $8,000 worth of peas there that were deliverable, which otherwise wouldn't have been, because they would have all been binned together and, and not made it through the sample hut. Uh, records, um, many of you would remember that Armageddon-style storm that hit South Australia and caused the, the blackout. Um, in 2016, um, we got hit with hail in September in, in that storm and then get, got hit again in November, um, right before this canola crop was ready to harvest. Um, we were staring down the barrel of probably our best canola crop era, ever at um, Bullaroo, so it was pretty disappointing. It was there, literally there one minute and 90 kilometre winds, 10 minutes later it was gone. Um, that's what it looked like afterwards. So um, that's... Yeah, thank God we can ensure for hail, I guess. Um, we use our yield maps um, for a post-harvest um, declaration system for our insurance. Um, our yield maps, along with some assessments um, from an independent assessor, um, allowed us to quantify the extent of the damage and uh, we actually ended up with significant, significantly better payouts by the fact that we had yield maps to back up the potential of our um, canola crops. So um, another thing that we use uh, are gross margin maps. Uh, they're a simple way, or I guess we can check it that our PA mapping efforts are making us dollar gains. Um, it's a simple way to distinguish whether inputs are um, resulting in more dollars. So basically what we can do is overlay a, um, a VR map at the top, put a yield map, um, or a PA uh, VR map on the bottom, put a yield map over the top and see whether um, input um, per rate equaled uh, yield. So we can then put dollars over the top and easily calculate out what each zone has um, cost us and made us. Um, I guess what this allows us to do is at the start and the end of the season um, go back and assist, um, assist us in assessing cause and effect, cause and effect. So I guess we're not going in blind every year. We know what our inputs are going to cost. We know, um, you know what they're making us out on the other end. Um, and uh, it also allows us to accurately budget and, and most importantly, make informed decisions. So the future, um, we obviously, I'm, I'm heavy, heavily involved in SPA and Joe and I have been members for, for 10 years now. We've been going to their expos and symposiums most years. Um, I guess this helps us rub shoulders with, with what the industry is doing and, and keep an eye out for any technology that will improve uh, our business in any way. Um, some of the ones we're looking at uh, to better manage our sheep flock more strategically and, and improve our records are perhaps electronic ear tags or um, a virtual fencing. Um, I think there's a few um, animal welfare um, hoops that, that that has to jump through before that's available to market, but um, certainly something we're keeping an eye on. Um, USB free precision ag, so as I alluded to, we'd like to be able to move data backwards and forwards via the cloud. That's already possible, uh, we're just not using it yet. Uh, protein mapping, um, once again, this is probably an 18 to $20,000 retrofit, so the advisory board hasn't allowed it to happen, but it's on the wish list. Um, we're gonna, we'd like to fit that to the harvester. Um, in the grain industry, we're, we're paid on our grain as to how much protein's in it and um, by, by protein mapping our property, um, we'd be able to selectively bin our grain um, based on protein on the go, and, and this would result in, in the maximum return for us. Uh, control traffic farming, um, as I alluded to before, um, we are not a true control traffic farming system yet. Um, our uh, sprayers on at uh, 90 feet, we've got a, a 40-foot cedar and a 40-foot uh, header comb. So we're, we're heading that way. Um, once again, the spray is not ready to be turned over. It's on the wish list. But uh, I guess there's a few different theories on, on how controlled traffic can uh, benefit, benefit your system. We're not so sure that the compaction issue um, is there for us, but um, we think there's efficiency gains to be made as our paddocks are becoming bigger. Um, going over the same wheel tracks uh, makes sense for us. Um, and then human resources. Um, uh, we use a Grain Truck Plus app. Um, and a safe ag systems app, and um, this allows you to clock on and off. We've got, 
We have the ability now to put virtual fences around all our properties and by moving in and out with your smartphone, you can clock on and clock off and keep records of who was on the property when. So I guess is Precision Ag profitable? Um, I was thinking about this and how I could sum it up. Um, I guess we continually ask ourselves the questions when we're looking at technology. Um, will it make our operations simpler? Will it make us more efficient? Um, will it enable us to increase our gross margin per hectare? Uh, will it help us manage risk or will it help us preserve, preserve a resource? And if the answer is yes to any of those, uh, then we say yes. Um, I guess in the end it's not about um, being exact about everything but being able to move forward and I guess looking back at that 10 year timeline of where Joe and I can have come from, um, you know, it has accelerated the way that we've done business um, and yeah, Precision Ag now is embedded in everything that we do. Um, we no longer embark on a particular practice blindfolded um, and we can evaluate the impact of all our decisions uh, before we implement them and we can evaluate their effect after we implement them, which I think is gold. Um, at the end of the day, um, we farm in a low rainfall environment. Um, we want to be here for years to come and um, we've got two young boys that I hope will come back onto the farm. And um, Joel and I truly believe that we're setting um, our, our business up to be as sustainable as possible by using uh, Precision Ag. So um, yeah, that's it from me.